Russian businessmen and unscrupulous businessmen who support Russia's war against Ukraine and continue to feel unpunished by avoiding U.S. and E.U. sanctions. It's a familiar problem, isn't it? The media regularly report on odious Russians who serve the regime and then fled to the West and tried to establish themselves there by any means. Magomed Musayev is an odious Russian businessman with a criminal record, but at the same time has an American visa issued to people of exceptional talent. It is to this character, who in Russia had the nickname Kasherik, for his love of cash, his extraordinary talents, as well as his attempts to deceive American society, and is dedicated to our investigation today. Today you will see and hear video recordings made by Magomed Musayev himself. For a long time, he carefully recorded his negotiations with Russian officials and businessmen with a view to their further resale or blackmail. However, this archive was hacked some time ago. the audio and video recordings we received of Russian swindler Magomed Musayev, admitting that he is the real buyer of the global magazine Forbes, confirm the veracity of the article by the well-known American online edition Axios that the head of the company Luminar, Austin Russell, an American, is only a figurehead in a publishing deal. The Ukrainian edition AN.UA, citing its sources, writes that the relationship between Musayev and Russell has developed since the time of one of the investment rounds in IT startups in the States, so nothing is surprising in that the American agreed to such a purchase. According to Musayev's interlocutor, he is essential that one Russian businessman who is buying Forbes holding. According to American journalists, Musayev involved Russell in the deal because selling Forbes directly to a character like Musayev in the U.S. is impossible. Questionable origin of money, questionable reputation and a Russian passport, to boot. On the screen we can see the house in San Francisco, in which the former manager of the exhibition complex of VDNK in Moscow lives. Such real estate costs millions of dollars, and given the habit of the Russian swindler not paying taxes and paying cash everywhere, it is surprising that the U.S. authorities have not yet paid attention to this. Anyway, back to the Forbes scam. We decided to do more research. And who exactly is this strange man who's positioning himself as the biggest investor in Silicon Valley? A man who, according to him, brings together the financial elite of the world for his birthday. Who is Maga Musayev? Who, in his own words, without five minutes, is the owner of the global Forbes? one of the most status world editions. Доступ кому угодно. Вот я купил сразу, мы полетели на частном самолете Эмиру Катара, э, первым лицом Саудовской Аравии, Абу Даби, с братьями. У меня когда есть Forbes, э, ну ты даже не представляешь, э, какого уровня, когда все хотят, люди, у которых есть деньги, губернаторы, они хотят, чтобы они написали, что пока у них, ну, у них все есть, им нужна репутация, mm. им нужно, чтобы они и так далее. И там вся история работающая. Поэтому я там кого надо, кому надо буду звонить, буду помогать. Если ты у меня в Нью-Йорке был бы на день рождения, ты увидел бы, это первое лицо Goldman Sachs, первое лицо JP Morgan, Рэй Далио, Тони Робинс, который у меня был там, Тамадо, я тебе покажу эту всю историю. Потом вся команда 
огромное количество, его называют местным Баффетом из Гонконга. For a start, we contacted Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, as well as the writer Tony Robbins, who supposedly moonlights as a tamada at corporate parties with Musayev, being one of the most sought-after coaches of the world. However, none of them confirmed their acquaintance with a Russian businessman. At the same time, the questionable deal to acquire Forbes after the investigation of our American colleagues has already interested representatives of the United States Senate and Congress. Senator Cotton, Congressman Swalwell and Waltz have publicly expressed concern about the situation. So, who is Mr. Musayev? Why does he buy Forbes on a figurehead? Why does he lie about friendship with the world's financial elite? And finally, whose money is he operating on? Потому что люди, страна, и вот эти люди, они доверяют фактам, доверяют то, что пишет Форбс. Это, это, это другого уровня истории, это другого уровня проекта. Если Форбс пишет о каких-то успехах, это тоже, ты моментально становишься глобальным. Это, это, это работает. We believe that it is obvious to everyone that Magomed Musayev is not an IT investor in Silicon Valley, but an ordinary Russian corrupter with money of unknown origin, a puppet in the hands of Russians, who by attempting to take control of the global Forbes and take revenge on the information field. In the notes at our disposal, Maga himself confesses that his true masters sit in Moscow. <laughs> На уровне первых лиц этой же организации я их подробно проинформировал, чем я здесь занимаюсь, кто я, какую пользу я приношу России, какие там технологические другие, когда сюда приезжают нежелательные элементы, типа там Ходорковский и других, как я эту историю нивелирую. You have not misheard. The deal to acquire Forbes is trying to pull off an agent of the Kremlin in the West, which in its own words benefits Russia, and interacts with the FSB. Musayev also boasts that, on a click, can directly go to Putin. We listen to the recording and ask it to comment on the heard by the famous Ukrainian Boris Tsingauzen. Это не первый случай, когда российские олигархи почему-то сильно заинтересованы в покупке известных информационных брендов, причем не на себя. Они это делают, прекрасно понимая, что покупка российским олигархам, на которого имеет абсолютно прямое влияние российское военное и политическое руководство, будет трактоваться как, ну, как минимум изменения политики издания и, и как это вообще отразится на информационной политике. Если кто-то думает, что экономическое издание Forbes а, публикует только рейтинги, статистику или какие-то экономические обзорные статьи, отчасти, правы только отчасти, потому что рейтинги тоже могут быть манипулятивными, потому что а, в том числе а, американский Forbes и российский Forbes а, часто касаются темы санкций, в том числе, да, российский Форбс, он называет вот эту войну спецоперация в кавычках они это ставят. Вроде как соблюдают определенные правила, но поверьте, через экономическое издание можно по большому счету влиять на экономическую политику. Ну, то есть влиять, купив авторитетный бренд, который фактически капитализирован и которому доверяют, и который читают, и потом аккуратно манипулировать, в том числе экономическими показателями, это очень легко делается. Ну а если мы учтем, что все-таки любой российский олигарх, он находится в тесной связке, в том числе и с российскими спецслужбами, то, мне кажется, цепочка здесь складывается довольно очевидно. Discrediting the Russian opposition in the West, developing the topic of not everything so unequivocally, sowing division and turmoil in American society, it is obvious that Moscow curators of Musayev pursue such goals, trying to push the deal on the purchase of Forbes. American political scientist Jason Smart commented on how this could threaten American society and what consequences it could have for us. In the case of Musayev, if he has in fact already admitted that he has bought Forbes magazine, it's obviously a sign that uh, there's something wrong. Uh, the United States should not allow any Russian national to control media ownership in the United States. That's 
something that's against the direct interests of America. And more to that point is that if we are trying to create cohesion in the country against Russian aggression in Eastern Europe, not only Ukraine, allowing someone like Musayev to have control of uh, a major media outlet is something that needs to be looked into. According to our information, the transaction that will result in Moscow taking control of one of the world's most famous publications has not yet been completed, and there is a good chance that the free world will still be able to stop this scam. Moreover, the attempt of Russians to take control of the global Forbes occurs just before the start of the presidential campaign in the United States. The impact of the publication on North American public opinion should not be underestimated. Accordingly, Russia may be able to intervene directly in American elections, which, in turn, directly affects U.S. national security.